Speak freely. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our Book of Boba Fett podcast. Uh, I got my friend Justin on the the right. Which way? Which way? This, that, 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 that way. That way. There we go. <laughs> He's on the right there. Uh, we are picking up where we left off last week. This is episode five. What is the title name of this one, Justin? Well, there were two. Um, there was one there that was shown... Uh, like when you went into Disney Plus, they didn't want to was, reveal it, right? I think they changed they the last. Yeah, which yeah, is smart, yeah, which so, is great, which is great. Totally, because uh, what was it called? It Return was of called, the Mandalorian, right? Is uh, well, that was the uh, the new one. The so we should we, sh we should also had the mention title card to, go up. We should also mention to anybody who's listening. Obviously, you're here to hear our thoughts on this episode, so. It should go without saying that we're going to spoil the entire episode, oh, <laughs> especially yeah. with the name that we just dropped. Uh, so if you don't want to know every little detail, or not every little detail, but if you don't want to know the episode, what happens, maybe come back after you watched it to listen and uh, or hear our thoughts um, and, or watch our th thoughts now because we're live on, uh, not live, but we're on YouTube recording ourselves. And uh, yeah, so... That's just a little warning. If you don't want to know the details of the episode, come back in a bit and check it out. Okay. Yeah. So the, the return of Mandalorian. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have some, I have a lot to get into here, uh, but okay. we'll, we'll talk about it at the, near the end of my, my thoughts of the episode. But this is nothing to do with Boba Fett initially. This is sort yeah. of, this is what, what do you want to say? A, a prelude to a uh, season three? Kind of, yeah, because it was like when the the series was being pitched, uh, a lot of people were saying that that Book of Boba Fett was essentially going to be Mandalorian season two point five, and yeah. this was a perfect example of that. Yeah, it, does it rub salt in the wounds kind of thing though for Boba? Because, I mean, just think about. It. I'm just trying to think of a, a comparison. Let's say we do. Um, Let's say one of the Disney Plus Marvel shows that we had, let's mm -hmm. Loki. Let's say we sure. had Loki. Here's a good example. Let's say we had Loki. We, we, we had the Loki TV show, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden Thor comes in there and takes some of the episodes away about Thor and his whatever journey he's going on or yeah. mini, mini journey. Doesn't that kind of, you know, kind of take away from Loki? Uh, you know, it does, right? Because it does. Th Thor's more popular. I mean, depending who you ask, but. Generally, you know, consensus is jo Thor is a lot more popular than Loki is. So when he comes into their show, it's going to people are going to be flocking towards that episode and talking about only that episode. And hmm. I feel that's the same way with Mando here is when he jumps into this series. It's like whatever is happening is what's going on with Boba. Pe people really don't care anymore. Right? Yeah, it was an interesting choice to do an entire episode of The Mandalorian. I mean, the Book of Boba Fett was initially started and had a big tease. Um, well, the, the preview for the Book of Boba Fett was part of a Mandalorian episode. So mm -hmm. it I do think, while I, I, I agree it could detract from Mandalorian's story, they are very intertwined, the two series. And I think yeah. it's kind of Disney doing a Marvel thing where they're having a lot of their series kind of blend together and world building yeah so it kind of just i well, guess in this case in this case groups galaxy them building. into yeah <laughs> groups them into the same universe yeah which by, is cool because people love crossovers yeah. right yeah absolutely and but i mean but what, what i'm trying to get at is like an entire episode pretty much mm -hmm. is dedicated to this character that has nothing to do with the series directly because mm. all the other episodes all four episodes is a different complete different tone mm -hmm. of what's going on and then we just get this it sticks out like a sore thumb i mean it, it felt the same uh bryce dallas howard's directed this one as well she did the last episode which was probably one of my favorite episodes so i think the actual tone and the feeling of it was very similar but the subject matter absolutely it 
kind of I mean we've been doing non-stop Boba Fett and flashbacks yeah. of his story so to do like a sub story of a completely different character while they are very related in the fact that uh, you know they had the same Mandalorian armor and blah 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 so yeah it was an interesting choice for sure Okay, so so he we see him in the episode right off the bat. Mando shows up. It's not like it's going to be in, somewhere in the middle of the episode. We get a glimpse of him. Yeah, it's he just right away right at a in. butcher's house. You know, butcher's uh, st uh, place. He walks in, and it's right away. Boom! Here we are, and he goes into. It's so similar to episode season one where he was in that bar mm -hmm. looking for somebody, and he walks in. And there in front of the, him is, um, you know, what, what are those guys called again? This these creatures. Platoonians. Platoonians, there you go. They're sitting they're sitting there and he's like, I need to, you know, find this person. And the, they're like, Well, we don't know who he is. And then he puts the hologram <laughs> and it looks like the guy in front of the hologram is like, seems like it looks like he goes, No, it doesn't look like me at all. <laughs> and look the like hologram, at all. it looks exactly like him, right? Yeah. And um, so basically he does, you know, the the he heroic says his line. He says the heroic line, like, hey, if you value your life kind of thing, you should leave you because warm. I'm probably going to take all of you guys out right now. Yeah. And, you know, they surround him. The typical thing that, you know, heroes have, the, the henchmen surround them or surround him and make it look like it's an imp impossible odd. But we all mm -hmm. know that it, this is going to take about a good, what, 20 seconds and then the room will be yeah. cleared. And that's exactly what happens. But he does kind of do a couple of things. One, he pulls out the freaking dark saber. Yeah. Which is so like, he's holy balls. Saber. Like, you know, finally we yeah. get to see a wield this shit. You're like, oh, yeah. shit. Right. And, and then he's just, you know, basically trying to wield it, but he sucks at it so bad. Yeah, <laughs> that was a really cool thing, because, like, we've seen in in so many movies and TV shows of just, like, Jedis wielding sabers and just being space ninjas and everything being fine. But this is, like, one of the first times that we get to see that, like, these aren't things that are easily wieldable. Yeah. And if you don't have training... Forget it. That's why Jedi's train yeah. a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Because in that training, they're able to wield that blade just like it's an, an extension of their hand. Right? Yeah, they're able to manipulate that blade in any way. That's why you see them putting it, in a, spinning it in a circle in their hand, and they're able to take on you know laser shots at at them, right? But yeah. he has no training in using a sword because he's used you know his gadgets and you know his gun to mm -hmm. fight off enemies and it's uh, his you know flame effect which i'm sad that we didn't see right because yeah was this the first episode we didn't see him use it pretty much right? oh, but yeah he's, sucks, he's fine right? with the the best car spear but just like an actual well i mean it is a Flame lightsaber was not there yeah so. but like uh, to actually see like even with uh melee weapon training and expertise a lightsaber acts completely different it needs ball different ball a game. lot of different training and and yeah. it's a, a much different yeah ball game for to actually well, wield you know, it. so he just basically takes all the monk cuts off the head goes outside dude it was a brutal scene yeah and I the know, fact that like <laughs> we, get, we just like tons of dudes just get decapitated yeah the the bounty that he's there for he like throw like suplexes him onto the table and then cuts him and the table in half so I, then, I, I, there's another line that he says before he begins. He's, I can bring you in warm. Yeah. Or I, I can, can bring, bring you in cold, cold. Which he said that same line. Yeah, he said that a couple times one, now. So I guess he brought him in. He's bringing him in cold, right? <laughs> so, yeah. And he's got the bag, you know, with the head in it. And he goes outside yeah. the door and he goes to all the workers there. Hey, um, there's a table full of cash over there. So I don't need it. But if you let me through, help yourselves. You know, yeah. give yourselves a well, and, bonus. And in the process, he also, again, showing that he's not, doesn't have expertise in wielding this weapon. He cuts himself. Yeah. Nice chunk out of his thigh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then obviously everyone's like, cash. Yeah, we'll take it. You go yep. ahead and do your thing. Uh, we're not messing with you anyways, because we see what you did <laughs> in that room. Or we heard what you did in that room. Yeah. So, yeah, he basically... Um, he goes out and um, he heads back. He heads to a ring. What, what do we yeah, call he, this? He goes to Halo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 
<laughs> We've evil. actually seen a planet oh like this before. <laughs> um, uh, I want. What was it in? Well, you you can see where the where the the budget went on this show. Yeah. They, they're like, we're going to skim some of the budget off the other episodes and put it here because the CGI was great. It was really, really good. The, yeah, the we, city the building, building was great. Yeah. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, this isn't the first time we've seen a, a Halo-esque planet in Star Wars. It was in oh, one of the TV shows or games, I think, at least. So the uh, bounty but, was basically a way to get back to his clan. Right, because you see, yeah. so you see him in the, with the visor, and and there's codes sent in the buildings imprinted, and then you see the um, the the last code, which is the um, I can't remember the name of it, and if it escapes me right now, but it's their symbol that they have for the Mandos, and that's the final door, and he goes there, and sure enough, what do we see? The uh, the Mythosaur is the skull. The Mythosaur, there you go. And then we see our um, good old friend, the uh, armorer, yeah, uh, sitting there in her, you know, what is it, meditation pose, you want to call it? Yeah. And she's all... That, that, that backdrop was super cool. The, the, like, the sewers of it, and it just... The backdrop is space. Yeah. It, it's basically... Um, it, it's just like the dead space, and it's just like so eerie, and it, mm -hmm. it's sort of like the edge of space. Yeah. Right? Like, you just nothing there but empty void. Yeah. So, he basically goes there and he's like, and it basically can't even walk, right? He's mm -hmm. just rolling down the stairs. And then we see our big boy, you know, heavy Mando, uh, heavy infantry Mando, which is um, our, the producer of, um, of, who's the name again? The producer? Oh, it was, um, the dude from, we always get uh, this guy's. We always forget his name. John Favreau. Chef. John, John Favreau. John. Yeah. Jeff Favreau. No, not his brother. No, no, no. The chef. <laughs> oh, chef. Okay. As I say, yeah. Jeff Favreau. <laughs> so yeah, John Favreau's John, character. Yeah, John Favreau. He's dressed up in the heavy Mando suit, and he's basically repairing his thigh. Um, I would think that with so much advanced technology, they would be able to repair that thigh a little bit faster. Well, what he, do you he, think? after like five minutes, he stops limping. So. It's just like some back to spray or something like that. <laughs> like when he was spraying that clear thing, I was like, "Isn't it supposed to like close up and like look like it's perfect?" <laughs> yeah, it does eventually. <laughs> they kind of cut away. If you can perfect intergalactic space traveling, I'm sure you can heal things a lot faster too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so he sh he basically you know is showing the blade to her, and then she gives sort of a rundown on the backstory of the blade and the mythos yeah. behind it we get more information we find out that she says first of all the galactic the empire has been around for what 30 years and mm -hmm. we've been around for ten thousand years the mandalorian uh yeah. facts the, the groups of mandalorian planet right we've been around for ten thousand years they got nothing on us yeah. yet that planet mandalorian got the the planet mando or Mandalorian got just Mandalore. Uh, Mandalore, sorry, got destroyed, yeah. and they even named it the Night of the Thousand Tears, right? The yeah. great, the purge, or, and the dome that they, or the whole city was, the Mandalore or a city was that uh, got absolutely annihilated, and yeah. it made that them was, all. That and, was a cool scene, like Terminator. And they showed that, and, and they showed yeah. that, um, you know, the purge. Yeah, the purge and everything. They show that, which I thought it was fantastic mm -hmm. to actually get to see. The scene in real life or, or in cgi rather than animation yeah. and then she talks about the blade itself saying you know it's forged by a jedi slash mandalorian uh, named mm -hmm. tar Vizla, which is the first wielder of the blade and then she talks about you can't gift this blade you have to yeah. win this in combat, in combat. To, to get the blade that that's how it works otherwise you will curse it so she basically is shitting on Bo-Katan because in the yeah. animation Bo-Katan was got gifted the, yeah gifted and then she cursed them because of that she said there's a curse behind it if you yeah. want to believe it or not but it, it turned out to be I guess true because she cursed the whole you know planet right yeah and then the purge happened so that yeah. everyone's kind of blaming her for that 
Yeah, and then that ex- kind of explains why she didn't take it when mm-hmm. he was giving it to her in episode, uh, season two. Like, here, take the blade. I don't care for it. And yeah. she's like, I can't because the last time I did that, shit went down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shit went down. <laughs> last time I did that, everyone died. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do this again, part two. Mm-hmm. So, and that also um, gets heavy Mando sort of in a in a hot and heavy, heavy bothered sort of state because it's his ancestors that wielded it right because remember yeah. mandalorian mandalorian um din Djarin was not an original mandalorian family no he's he was a family rescued family. yeah he was yeah. he was rescued right by that uh, group that clan the and Night um, Wings, i think it was yes yeah and um basically he's like i want i want that blade back in my family yeah right so of course they oh yeah visla what's yeah. it not not pre visla tar uh Tar Vizla yeah, was was the original founder. So yeah, yeah, they they square off, you know, and you know, they want to fight, and it sort of reminded me of like Darth Vader fighting Luke on that balcony, <laughs> you know, yeah. where one of them yeah. will fall, they could die, that's it, right? It's just like a little tiny, like why would they want to do that? Like first of all, they they're they're gonna be buddies afterwards. They're gonna be on the same side. Yeah, why well, would I, you- I mean that's. Mandalorian. But why would you want to risk each other's life? That's that's the point. That's they this can't is the way? do it if this is the way. Yeah, it's just like if there's no stakes, then it's not serious. But they weren't gonna kill each other. They were gonna fight till one gives up. But no, if you fight was... on an ledge like this, one of them could die. Yeah. Then that that is the be wrong the way, and... my friend. That is the wrong yeah. way. I mean, that's the Mandalorian way. They don't mess around. I don't know, Mandalorian. Just, they haven't learned. <laughs> there, there's not that many of you out there, guys. You know, yeah. you've got your what handed to you. <laughs> there's only a few of you left. Why would yeah. you want to f- kill your own kind off, right? This Salvage as many of you can. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, they get into a little duel. It was a good fight. It was a decent yep. fight. Uh, and a lot of headbutts. Dinjarn sort of wins at the end. Has the blade on him on his neck, and. Then you have the armor come in and she just kind of she's like the party pooper. She just comes in there and she's just like did you ever take your helmet off? And <laughs> our uh, heavy man is like no, I never did that. And then he, she goes, Din did you ever take the helmet off? And he's like, and oh, we all know oh. the answers and I'm like, yeah. oh no. Yeah. This dude just got here. You're going to already kick him out? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, to kill somebody to come see ex- you again. <laughs> yeah, he gets excommunicated, and then he goes on like, like. So the the subtext of this was actually really funny because like, if you take a step back and yeah. look at what happened, essentially he's just like, this is his Mando's midlife crisis. <laughs> he, he loses his kid, gets fired from his job, uh, gets excommunicated, and then he goes and he's like, screw it, and goes and builds a hot rod. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Midlife Mando. Yeah. Hashtag that, please. <laughs> Midlife Mando. We should put the that Mando. In sub- somewhere yeah. in the channel. But sorry, <laughs> let's get it, uh, go back a little bit uh, at the beginning here. Yeah. Why he came also. He came to melt. Well, she told him, melt the spear because it was gifted to you and you don't need that anymore. You have the blade. Well, no, the, the spear, she was like, uh, Beskar shouldn't be used as a weapon because that can be used against Mandalorians. Yeah, it'll so pierce it's your armor. A, a so, danger. And, and then she, and he's she's, like, all right, cool. And, well, he's like, well, I got it gifted to me by uh, a Jedi. Right? Mm-hmm. And it was Ahsoka that gifted it to him. Right? Yeah. So he's like, it was gifted to me. And she's like, okay, well, what do you want to do with it? And he's like, well, I want to melt it into uh, the the younglings or foundling yeah. uh, armor. And and she's like, who? And then, you know, like, he's, he's basically like, not trying to tell her who it is, but she yeah. knows. He's like, I got the, a specific one. And, yeah, and, and then, then we all She's like, know well, he's not is. your problem anymore. He's like, yeah, yeah well, I still want to, like, hang out. Yeah, you know, you know, he's got a father, but, you know, I was his father first, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, And then he's like, yeah, I want to get him something. It's, it's like, a, you know, it's a divorced dad that's trying to go. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to <laughs> it's a divorced be the dad. cool dad still. <laughs> yeah. Wants to be the awesome dad and go to the birthday party and give him the best gift in the party, right? Yeah. So he's like, best car's the best in the world. So I'm gonna get him mm-hmm. to for my, you know, son. And uh, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Do you think it's chain yeah. link? Do you think it's chain link uh, or? or is it just a a necklace for the 
the skull. Well, it can't be a necklace. That's a lot of Beskar armor for necklace. It is a lot. I, well, we don't know that he used all of the spear to make it. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe that's it is just like a mithril. What if it's just a giant vest. big logo of their uh, their 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 Cree? Oh, the house. The house. The, the uh, or or um, I, I think it's a symbol. It's like a, probably a big chain or something. Probably kind of yeah. hangs. Because I don't see him wielding uh, armor on him. I mean, hey, who knows? We'll, we'll see, right? So he basically he gets that as a gift to give, and then uh, he gets booted out of there. So then she goes to him. The only way to redeem yourself is you walk in some water at the bottom of Mandalore. Some yeah, and then he's like cave, and then he's like, but it's destroyed. And she's like, <laughs> and she's like. Why this is the way. my problem. I told you what you gotta do. Yep. My These problem. are the rules. Yeah, but they blew up. Yep. Well, this is the way. Yep. <laughs> you gotta figure it out. I don't know. Dig up, dig up another cave and find some water. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that ain't my problem. I'm still wearing my helmet. Sounds like a you, you problem. Took yours off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go figure it out, son. <laughs> so yeah, so he's packed up as you know what, and then he's like, "All right, all right I'm out of here." Right, and then he goes and Ubers it to Tatooine. Right, and gets on a and gets on a bus, giant giant Uber bus. <laughs> I did love, I did like the when he got to the front, and the droids just like can't have any weapons on here, and he's like, it's part of my religion. He's like, you can talk to my supervisor. He's like, okay, fine, whatever, and then just unloads all his stuff, all his knives and guns, and like, there I you go. Gonna, I know I, everything I a, that's in there. <laughs> I thought he's gonna miss his ship. <laughs> like they would have done. Mm. Sorry, it's already full. <laughs> you gotta wait for the next one. Right? Yeah. But he's like, yeah, I I know everything is in this bag or this uh, suitcase. So if it goes missing, I'm coming after you, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when he puts the blade in there, right? Yeah, the. Dark but can shaker. you imagine he opens up and the blade's gone? That would I was be kind so of expecting funny. that, and I was I was gonna be like, oh great, now you have to do a side quest to find it again. <laughs> but the Pikes have it now. Um, yeah. So he gets uh, back. To, that's his excuse to go back to Tatooine, uh, and he goes to see the lady who fixed the ship in the first place she was getting mauled by some rodent and yeah. he basically saves her you know she a uh, little side story she actually looks like one of my co-workers that used to work with me she's retired oh now. really yeah so she she looks exact she has the same hair same like the like the build and everything she, she was a really nice co-worker of mine so yeah it was it's just funny every time i see her it reminds me of my co-worker that's funny but um she was so, probably my least favorite character in the in the Mandalorian. What did she do to you? No, she, she just it. had a lot her? of. She's so nice. She's a sweetheart. She just had a bunch of cringy lines, and well, she wasn't gonna like, have any earth shattering effective lines. She's just like a side character. No, I know. Just I I just didn't like her as an as an actor. I didn't. Oh, she come on. Yeah, just like her presentation and how she delivered the lines. It was just super forced and felt weird especially in the okay. mandalorian um right, it, she was she was moderately better in this episode i thought she was hilarious i just thought she's just like let's talk about what she was doing she basically was assigned to get him another razor crest right yeah and she fine. told him pretty yeah. much like i got you the i got you the razor crest right yeah i got you a new, a new yeah. ship <laughs> so, well before that we get to see the first uh live action uh bd droid so the yes. bd droid was cal crest cal whatever Kessis, his name is yeah. from cal Kessis, from the game yeah, from the from, game yep yeah. from um Jedi it's, it's the Order. actual one though is it not uh, we don't know we don't know that that's bd1 that's just it could just be another bd unit it's a great that was it's a great 30 ish history. years or 20 years so he's still was, alive yeah well he'd be in his 40s or late 30s now so yeah I mean, uh, that's maybe. awesome because I would love to see that character. Yeah, he's he's still alive and kicking. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't remember the exact timeline, but he maybe like 10, 15 years because um, it was. Yeah, anyway, um, so we get to see a BD unit in live action, which is the first mm -hmm. time. Um, and then, yeah, then she's just like, here, I got this. I got the a replacement for the Razor Crest. And then she unveils a Nubian what is it mb1 or whatever like the starfighters from the naboo starfighter are like torn up yeah so the naboo starfighter um and n1 starfighter is called mm -hmm. and uh it is the it is anakin's ship 
right? And they do do a little drop talking about the Naboo prince, you know, princess, and yeah. we know who she, who they're talking about. So it is Anakin's ship, which is as soon as I saw it, I'm like, wow, that is so unexpected. Yeah. And, and well, we just, don't know that it's Anakin's ship, but we know that it's the same. I'm, I'm betting. It's a I'm Naboo betting, starfighter. Uh, yeah, I'm betting it's Anakin's ship. I've got a, I've got a hunch it is. Well, it's not really his anymore because they modified the you know what out of it, mm -hmm. um, and pretty much it's their own customization ship. And yeah. the funny thing is, a lot of people had that ship a while back when they bought Star Wars figures. When that series came out, what twenty years something like ago? I had one. So there, so you had one, and it was yellow, right? Yeah. Yep. So look what they did. They're like. Man, we're not gonna give you the yellow one again. We're gonna give you a new revised version of it. So yeah, the you're gonna go and pick it up version. again. <laughs> Yo, that thing was so cool. They yeah. had like the engine manifold thing popping out the top. They had a bunch of new guns on it. Say, so I'm all over that thing. All. If they give me a six inch scale one. Oh, hell I'm yeah! I'm all over. I'm telling you right now. I'm all over that thing. Like, yeah. if you, I don't care how much it costs. If you tell me there's a six inch version where I can put Mando in there, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Because it, when I first saw the ship, I'm like, this is stupid. But then when they put it together and then he it, took yeah. the flight, I'm like, sold. Yeah. Then he gets in, go, takes sold. it for a test drive. And the thing, the sound design was so cool for it. And then they go through Beggar's Canyon, do the old pod. Pod, yeah, uh, where Luke, you know, like, did his training and you know driving around, and where Anakin yeah. even raced and all that stuff. Yeah, the, it was the nostalgia Eve. hitting you in the face. And it was cool because like they go <laughs> through. There were so many scenes that were like the similar, similar or same camera angle from the pod racing scene in Episode One. They were so then, smart. They were so. But smart. you get to see how it how uh, Beggars Canyon has changed. So like a lot of the scenes, they like go by they go by like the service ramp that um anakin goes off of and mm -hmm. then but you see like houses that are now in the in the walls and stuff and they yeah did yeah. a lot of really cool cool things like that they gave you a touch of nostalgia but they added in what evolution and time over mm -hmm. time does things to environments right? yeah and for me though the part where he is hovering and coming up and then when you see that at camera angle, it just so felt so real. Yeah. You know, it's the like, I'm, it's like CG. It was, yeah. It went was top so notch. much harder. It was so much better in, in, in this one. It, it, Every, just, it, was, it was very like photorealistic. It really felt like he was flying, like really mm -hmm. felt like it was flying. It was not in a studio with great lighting, but it, in actuality, it's CG with great lighting mm -hmm. and in a studio. Right. Yeah. But it just well, and even the felt... scenes when, like, in the cockpit, when he's flipping the switches, mm -hmm. it was like the same buttons that Anakin hit in the episode one and stuff. And it was like, all right, I know this cockpit. I, yeah, I remember yeah. this. I remember and then these buttons. Pulled, the coolest part was in space, and he gets pulled over, right? The X. Yeah, he goes over. goes to the big cruiser, flies by it, and I was, and it was just like, oh, I didn't know that they would be allowed to do that. And then he immediately gets pulled over by the cops. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> and he gets pulled over, and then he's like trying to. You know, talk to them and you know we get some you know guest appearances from um some people and uh so the gentleman that the first gentleman that talked to him mm -hmm. uh apparently he was reprising his role he was the guy they used as a body double for luke in oh the, the end yeah, of who... uh, it was the same guy they used him as the body body for uh luke skywalker and they cg'd over his face Okay. It was the same gentleman. The first uh, person to talk. The first uh, pilot that was talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was... The second pilot was uh, from Kim's Convenience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he um... uh, plays his role because he was in... Remember the episode where they went to that ice planet? He was the pilot there. Yeah. So he was there. So And the yep. other pilot in the ice planet was Dave Filoni. Oh! Oh. Yeah, yeah. So the, the other pilot, I'm, I'm just looking up who the, the pilot was. Because, yeah, he did look Yeah, he was a body familiar. double for Luke. They CGI'd over his face during the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Fi finale for the Mandalorian. Yeah, he was... Uh, who was it? I'm just trying to find what the actor's name is. But, I mean, um, that scene was pretty hilarious because he's trying to convince them, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, and then, and, you know, 
They're like, we, we heard your name before. You sound, or you, we've heard your voice before. You sound familiar. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, I thought he was going to say, yeah, it was me, blah, blah. I, you know, I saved, you know, but people there, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, nope, yeah. it wasn't me at it all. It just I noped out of there. Yeah. And, and then he just flips know. the switch and he is gone. Yeah. Like, forget about it. He is gone. And they're both, they're just looking at each other like, should we go after him? He's like, <laughs> what? What are you You want to fill out paperwork all day? Yeah. Do you want to do all this? And it's like, no. He's like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And then just go about their business. <laughs> but yeah, that, that plane is just insane. Yeah. It's just a next level thing. So, I, I you know, and then he's got the, they took out the droid uh, spacing yeah. in the back. And guess who's going to be hanging out in the back? We all know. It's yep. going to be Grogu. He's going to be yep. chilling with them in the back. That's going to be so cool. <laughs> I can't wait. This good old Grogu just, you know, got his lightsaber and ready to roll. Yeah. In the back. Well, yeah, because they, the the first thing I thought when he was, when they were repairing it um, or building it or hot rodding it was like the Razor Crest could carry a lot of stuff. So this is also kind of a development of him because like his old ship could carry all these dudes in carbonite and all his weapons and stuff. And this is how I, uh, what I meant when like, this episode featuring exclusively the Mandalorian or Din Djarin was thematically similar to Book of Boba Fett was because he is also, his character is also evolving to like have more purpose. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to be a bounty hunter and do stuff for money or whatever. Like he's yeah. kind of straying away from that. And this also like him getting that new ship is like, well, he doesn't have any room for that. So like his purpose is more it has changed significantly and even like the things that he carries around with him are are reflecting that because his ship has like room for a passenger and that's about it not even a passenger a small yeah. passenger yeah it's like it's like you know you're you're driving a porsche the back seats yeah they're useless unless you yeah. have an infant there. Why would you put an infant in the back of a Porsche anyway? Right? <laughs> yeah. But that's what basically it is. Right? It's not going to mm -hmm. be a, if someone who's going to be an adult that's going to be able to fit in the back there. Yeah. Uh, this is. Um, I mean, do you do you like you 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 bring up a good topic uh, point there? Like he's not going to be able to carry prisoners or stuff like that, and mm. because he's not um, a Mandalorian now, he's been exiled, mm -hmm. and. I don't know. Does it does that make him just sort of go go kill people and get money instead of actually bringing them back as bounties? Well, I guess he's. Oh, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, can, you can put a head in the back there. I was gonna say you could you could fit a couple heads in there. Yeah, and yeah. Bags. There you go. Like, but I think good. he's the only reason he was doing the jobs before were to get information or track down more Beskar. So it was doing things for the clan, and then the only reason he was doing the last bounty was to get info on the Enclave. And yeah. so, and even she's just like the, the person that hired him, he was like, yeah, stay a while. And, and, uh, and I've got more work for you. And he's just like, oh, whatever. And I'd put that on ice and then leaves. Cause he's like, he's not there for work or money. He's there for information. So yeah. I think even just like that alone is showing that like, he's only there to better himself or like kind of do things to. He's, he's not there for money. He's not there just to be a bounty hunter. Well, it, it, it proves it because when Finnick shows up at the end there, she gives him a bag full of cash and says, hey, Boba needs your help. Yeah. And he's like, I do it for free. So I, yeah, I'll he's like, this one's free. on the house. <laughs> yeah. And that shows that there's a respect there for the two of them mm. because Boba would do the same for him. And in fact, has done that for him already. Yeah. Right. Where he's went in there and stuck his nose in there to help him out. So yeah, um, he just recognizes that he's a friend of his. He's like, I do it for free. But he goes... Hold on a minute here. I just got one little pit stop to make. Yeah, I gotta go to a friend of mine, friend. and we know what that is. The next episode yep. is gonna be him going to see Grogu. And or to... is that gonna be? Or are they gonna do that with Book of Boba Fett? What? And then, so okay, that whole like going to visit Grogu. Do you well, think the that next this episode is, just... is gonna have Grogu in it, and Grogu's gonna come back and help. That's my theory. Hmm. Grogu's coming back well, with some lightsaber wielding abilities and force abilities. Well, he's only and been he's, gonna come. he's only been gone for what? Maybe, probably not even a year. Hey, he's a if fast learner. Really... What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that they would. I think that they. 
I so in the next episode because again this was a lot to go away from Boba Fett. I don't my, my, and my especially two is, episodes left. My concern is if the if Luke sends Grogu to to go with Mando. Mm -hmm. Does something happen with Luke where he, or Luke disappears? Does this got to be something where Grogu comes back to Mando and stays with Mando for season three? Because I don't see a season three without Grogu and him together again. Sure. They're like yeah. two peas in a pot, right? Yeah. They need to be together for fans to be happy because mm -hmm. fans are used to seeing the two of them together. And something happens. There's a reason why he's going there because something's going to happen and he's going to have to come back with Grogu and Grogu's going to have to stay with them for out of necessity, whatever it is, there's got to be mm -hmm. something's going to be happen. And that will also explain why Luke was in an island by himself in that treacherous trilogy that we watched, mm -hmm. right? That might give some context to that. Um, well, there's also been some speculation that uh, the Knights of Ren would make an appearance either in this show or or another um so that might be the start because luke took him away to train him so yeah. he obviously has started you know a training school so that might be the the beginning of the knights of ren that you're seeing which later or they'd be called something else but like the people who become the knights of ren that uh, ben solo takes away from him so again i and i don't think that Luke would let Grogu go because like he's just going to help some crime lord stuff like that the Jedi don't give a shit about that like what, no, what, what I'm be... saying is something something's gonna happen where he has to go with back with sure him. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think saying that I think maybe Luke says I, I can't train him or there's there's gotta be a reason and we'll, we'll see next week maybe I'm overthinking mm -hmm. this but it doesn't make sense for Grogu to go back with him yeah. Unless it's out of necessity. Yeah, that's that's and, what I'm saying too. It's like yeah. this is just like some crime lord stuff on Tatooine. Like this doesn't this doesn't matter yeah, it, as far as the Jedi. It's not a cause for concerns. him to leave and abandon the Jedi training. Yeah. Right? It's not So it's do you think that sort they're going to Do you think they're going to spend any more time on Ma the Mandalorian for next episode because again they only have two episodes left. Well, that's that's my that's my this is where I was going to get into here is this mm -hmm. is what my problem is with this episode as well because I feel like this was not necessary in the Boba Fett series. Sure. I felt this you could have just brought Mando in as a favor. You called yeah. in and say, "Can you come in for a favor?" I would have been totally content with that and be like, "Yep, yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> Yeah. Ben is around, but he, he Boba he owes Boba Fett a favor. He's coming mm -hmm. in. He'll get some cash. He'll be on his way, and he has to get his razor crest anyways from the lady. So, mm -hmm. to me, I would have been okay with that. It it's fine with me. But because I got a whole episode, I have an issue with this because Disney could have been so like Filoni and the team could have been so much more intricate where they could have give this as a prequel episode to tease us for. Mm -hmm. The next season they could have said hey after the book of boba fett we're going to give you a bonus episode mm -hmm. where it shows what you know din has been doing all this time and that sort of whet your appetite for you guys to get ready for season three to me yeah. that would have been cooler and i think it doesn't take away from boba's story because the story finishes and then this prelude episode shows up after as a bonus yeah to so me, i think yeah i think the the next two episodes Actually, also, um, a note is that this is the first time in the Book of Boba Fett that we've gone off world. So this is mm -hmm. the first time we've yeah. seen space. And I think that there might be some scenes in the next couple episodes or in like the big finale in space. I think yeah. they might have to go to a uh, a Pike cruiser or something and, and do some fighting there. So I think having this episode was kind of needed to show because obviously in those in those episodes we're not going to see the razor crest we're going to see him with his nubian cruiser uh there's nubian fighter and then if they hadn't have done all of this backstory and showing why he left um why he's on tatooine why he built this ship um i think just showing up in an episode or two with a new with a Nubian fighter, everyone would have been like, "What the hell? Why does he have that? This makes no sense." But I, so I think 
this was kind of needed to show why he's going to show up with this new ship. If they don't have any space fighting scenes and they don't have any like close-ups on his new ship, then I agree that this was kind of out of nowhere and didn't add anything to the Book of Boba Fett. Not that I didn't like this episode. This is probably one of my favorite episodes. Ship? Does he need a ship right now for Book of Boba Fett? That's does what I'm saying. To... Like in in the next two episodes, there might be some space fighting stuff. And if they just had him show up with this random ship without any explanation, it would have felt really weird and been like, why the hell does he have that ship? Yeah. So yeah. if they don't have any space fighting scenes, then this wasn't needed. Yeah. If they do, then I understand why that they spent so much time showing all the backstory and reasoning into why he has this ship. Yeah, the the things that happened to him in this episode has to directly impact Boba Fett. Yeah. If it doesn't, then what was this for? Was to Yeah. Did they did they realize the writing on the wall was that Boba Fett is not doing so well and decide to <laughs> insert this in there? Like maybe maybe that's why they changed the title? Uh the conspiracy theory there? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, I mean, this it, is all planned out and like... Is it? Is it? Oh, absolutely. This this stopped... This, <laughs> this finished to, filming like just a year and a half ago. I'm just trying to stir the pot here. But no, yeah, I mean... It's, I don't know. I Honestly, I just... I felt weird to watch this because it got me hyped mm -hmm. up for season three. Sure. Because I'm like, yeah, I know this is a great episode and I love it. But now I want to watch episode... I want to watch Mandalorian. I don't want to watch Boba yeah. Fett anymore. Like, I just... I don't care yeah. about this anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's kind Boba of been... Fett, Boba Fett's is centralized, like we said, in one city. Yeah. It's this little grounded, and it's it's great for what it is. But when you bring the Mandalorian episodes or the TV show into the mix, now it becomes a galactic thing. Yeah, it's, now it's, it's so much bigger. Literally out of this world, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it just feels like two different stories, and one feels a lot smaller than the other. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't feel like they're twine, twined together, even though they are, right? Well, and it kind of ex ex accentuates the fact that this se series hasn't really made us care about Boba Fett yet. You've made that very clear, too. <laughs> you've been really, like, you've been adamant about episode, that. <laughs> the last episode was great, and I yeah. started caring more. This episode was awesome, but it didn't make me give any anything yeah. about i didn't care at all about boba fett um and i was just like i'm entertained we see mandalorian this is a cool story and then it's just like oh we got a couple like sprinklings of what's her name talking about the pikes and how they're terrible and it's just like all right but okay yeah and honestly like this would have been better served as a prelude i would have been mm -hmm. more happy that they give this as a surprise drop as a bonus to get us ready for season three Sure. Uh, season three is not coming out till what? End next of year. this year or maybe uh, early next year? They're saying. Uh, I think early it all next depends year, yeah. on. It all depends on how fast they get the work done, right? Yeah, I think it's already filmed. Yeah, they still have to finish the editing and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I think I, it's scheduled for uh, like March of twenty twenty three. Yeah, so early next year, yeah. Which is unfortunate because I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> Seeing this episode, I don't want to wait that long. It's oh just, no, it's uh, see. Okay, so it's um apparently it's coming out. Yeah, twenty twenty two. So it end is of twenty twenty two, near the end of Christmas yeah. time, right? So they'll probably yeah do it uh, Christmas time like they normally do, but that's yes. speculation. So I don't think it's actually been confirmed. Okay. So well, what, whatever the early... case, it, it is still far away. Yeah. So it's so unfortunate. Two other series that are coming out uh, this year. <sighs> Let can you can you imagine him crossing paths with the um, the uh, with the rebel um, the rogue the people rogue squadron. Rogue, yeah, rogue squadron. That'd be pretty can you imagine cool. Him crossing paths with that would be sick. Yep. But that they might be doing that with the uh, with what's his name Kim's convenience guy because that's yeah. there's a lot of uh, what are the, it's showing that the um, Republic is present uh, around that area and around Tatooine and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they might be, again, sprinkling that character in because he might be a more of a focus later on. I wonder when Ahsoka's coming out. I can't remember that at all. Did they uh, even announce so that? Because that, uh, that, that's probably going to be our first glim glimpse of um, 
um what's his name now i had his name in my head now uh, uh, admiral thrawn right. yeah thrawn's gonna be the the big um the big baddie yeah the thanos yeah pretty much <laughs> um yeah they funny don't have how, a funny release. how they're both like colored faces yeah they're both bluish hinge well one's purple tinge. and one's blue yeah uh, they don't have a release date specifically. So we got Obi-Wan next. And I think they only just started production um, on Ahsoka. So that's probably going to be in spring then. Yeah. Or oh, production. Well, oh, that's probably, probably summer next 2024. year. 2024. Yeah. Oh, is it 2024 they said? But yeah, they, um, they got a long ways to go then. Yeah. Yeah. They only just started production on it. So um, Interesting. there's probably a, a while um so yeah so it's gonna be boba fett next and then they're going back a bit because they're doing uh uh what's his name the andor captain andor's series okay yeah andor's gonna be cool oh let's just see yeah. some crossovers there maybe boba fett shows up there who knows maybe um okay what do we give it this out of 10 Unless you have anything As, else to say. Uh, yeah. The ship was super cool. Uh, this was a, a really... So, I would say that this would be a 9 for a Boba Fett episode and an 8 for a Mandalorian episode. Oh, well, well you, can't have, you can't pick one. You can't have two. Just pick what, what the episode is, what it's for. Yeah, it was, it was a 9. T take the names out of it. It is a good episode, and what would you rank it out it of It was 10? a great episode, and I would say this is a, a 9. A nine. Okay. I honestly, um, I, I think this is a great episode as well. I'm, I'm also taking the, the titles away out of my head. I'm just talking mm -hmm. about the episode itself. Uh, we already expressed what I thought of why and where the show should have been. This episode should have been, but I give it a nine out of 10 as well. This is, um, a great, uh, story. It does a lot of, you know, world building for the back mm -hmm. end of what happened to Mandalorians and the planet and everything. It gives us more, information about yeah. how important this blade is uh how important the the mandalorian culture is right so it's nice to get that and it, it just makes them feel more real now more involved in yeah. this because they've been around for so long right so yeah before the, we just thought there were just some bounty hunters and they were low level beneath the jedis but we see that how important they were right yeah so yeah nine out of ten for me um, i'm excited to see season three of mandalorian <laughs> but I'm I, I want to get back to this Boba Fett show and I hope in the next week they do sort of like a sh quick Grogu thing you know half the episode and then get into the last half of the episode into back into the Boba Fett situation yeah that's what I'm thinking because I don't want just one episode at the end about Boba that's just a complete waste then or okay maybe they have um, Boba Fett come with Din to go Where, hang how's out he with gonna Luke? get in the ship he's only seats one no, but he he can take the slave one. But he uh okay. They well, both we'll take see. their ships. Whoa, oh. wait, wait, hold on. Speculation time. Because there's also a bunch of rumors that uh Mace Windu's gonna show up. The dude that Have fell not... off the dude that got his arm cut off and fell? Yeah. So he only got his arm cut off and then fell. To his which, death. Which we don't Did know. Did he not die? It's, no, it's never been confirmed. We don't Off have his lightsaber. Tower building. Yeah, who cares? That happens all the time. As we've said okay. in, in, multiple times before, <laughs> falling down a pit means that you don't die. Yes. Nobody has ever died from falling down a pit. Okay. And Boba's like, see, I told well, you guys. <laughs> and he's got, he's had so many of his flashbacks have been on, um, uh, what's that planet called with the bugs? Uh, anyway, that that he's like misses his father. There was a ton of genosis. There's a ton of flashbacks genosis, of yeah. him on genosis holding his his dad Django Fett's helmet because he got beheaded by oh, uh, Mace okay, Windu. Okay, okay. So All he right, killed good. and so in the animated series in Clone Wars and stuff, he tried to get revenge and tried to kill Mace Windu. Mace. So like yeah. that thing's already um, established that he knows who he is and has tried to get uh, revenge on him. Um, there's a bunch of flashbacks of him 
you know, missing his dad, seeing him go off to do bounty hunting jobs and stuff and felt abandonment issues for that. So, and also, um, Star Wars Twitter or Instagram, uh, on, I think, uh, Sam Jackson's birthday, uh, tweeted out a picture of him saying the party isn't over. That's so speculation. The, the speculation is great because I would love to see him back there, but giving him only one episode, maybe, maybe it's a quick episode where Boba's like, no, I don't need you. Boom. Shoots him in the head and kills him. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> maybe hilarious. they go to meet with Luke to hang out and party with Grogu and Mace Windu's there. Maybe he's part and he shoots of, him in the head. of the, the, the class. Yeah. And then he shoots him. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. I don't need your help. Boom. You're dead. Get out yeah. of here. And that's his cameo. And then we're good. <laughs> yeah. And then he dies. <laughs> but yeah. So maybe. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So this was awesome. And, and if you're listening to us, um, we, you know, thank you for listening to us on our podcast platforms. Uh, Spotify, um, iTunes, etc. But if you want to see us um, actually on YouTube, check us out. We're on our YouTube channel at Astonishing News and Reviews. And if you want to go and follow us on our social media platforms, go to at Astonishing NR. Make sure if you go to our YouTube channel, give us a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and leave a comment because we're giving away prizes every month. If you want every to know what month. we're gonna, what are you gonna win this month? Go check out our videos. We explain what we uh, give away every month. So yeah, you know, thank you for watching us, and may the force be with you this this month. And we'll see you next week for episode six. Say bye, Justin. Yep. The penultimate episode. Okay, bye, internet. Bye.